Welcome once again to Superhero Stuff You Should Know. This is The Amazing Spider-Man 2, and with me is... Andrew Narfield. What's up? <laughs> Perfect name for this episode. <laughs> Perfect. I wish I thought of it sooner. <laughs> well, we got to hear. Uh, so, we're going to cover the movie that Sony messed with the most out of the Spider-Man franchise, The Amazing Spider-Man 2. So, Let's what we're going to be covering is concept art, but also deleted scenes, deleted subplots, stuff that uh, didn't make it in. Uh, this is one of those that I think people always sort of wonder, what if, or... Because clearly, right, there's a lot of studio mandates on this one. You know, we have to set up the Sinister Six. We have to set up other movies. This has to happen. It has to have three villains. All right. those things. So... We're going to kind of dive in, mainly with the concept art, but, you know, towards the end, dive into some of the stuff that we know on the deleted scenes and uh, what would end up being the last film in this sort of short-lived version of stuff, not including Garfield, you know, Andrew Garfield coming back in No Way Home. But uh, this is one of the, it's one of those movies where you're just like, I can't, I wonder what the original intention was, <laughs> you know, like what, what they were really wanted to. They wanted uh, to be good, but... Well, happened. yeah, of course. But you know what the what a lot of the core of what was supposed to be seems like it was lost, and uh, we'll just we'll take a look at uh, some of the what if. But uh, first, the designs, uh, the concept art. So let's take a look. So first off, what we have here is some looks at uh, they wanted to upgrade the suit in this movie. Uh, people have noticed that the suit in Amazing Spider-Man Two is actually different from the one that he has in the first one. It's a little different, um, and I think a lot of people preferred it. In this, uh, in the new movie, uh, or the new movie at the time, uh, this is an alternate design uh, for that. You notice the blue is almost like a gray in this one, uh, and the eyes almost look gray in this. So it's more of like a gray and red kind of design. Uh, uh, the, I don't like it. Yeah, you know, well, that's why they <laughs> they changed it around. Thankfully, the one in the movie is a lot different. Now, now we're yeah. getting a little. This is a little bit more traditional colors, right? Now we got the uh -huh. blue and red, right? Um, yeah. Still interesting, like. We've got these bright blue lines in di different places that I don't know if it's necessary, and the lenses look blue too. So I don't know if they needed to go that far. Again, I think it's once again they found that the best way is to just make him look like the comic book Spider-Man. Yeah. Uh, yeah, blue lenses are not good. Yeah. This is getting closer, right? Yeah, and this next one is closer. Though this one looks even closer, more to a Tom Holland type of suit than what we got with with Andrew Garfield. To me, maybe it's just because of the look of the. There's almost like a metallic look to it. Um, yeah, that's probably what it is. Do you have a? We're gonna have a side by side of the Amazing Spider-Man one and two suits. That would be interesting. Uh, we can pull it up after the break. Okay. Yeah, we'll do something like that. Yeah. Uh, for right now, these are just the uh, the concept art that Dan could find. Uh, so this is the designs we're looking at specifically are from Kelton Cram at the Aaron Sims Company, uh, and so. Kelton did a bunch of the designs for the Spider-Man suit, but also did ones, uh, and then we got the web shooters here. Sort of an organic look to the web shooters, even though they're mechanical. Um, okay. Kind of a little bit like Iron Man's gauntlet, a bit with the glowing lights, but you know, in the end, just keep it simple. You know, It's just a wrist device that, he's, that he has on his wrist. Like, come on. Yeah, it's overly, like it's over-designed. This look doesn't really work for the web shooters, but let's take a look at uh, some of the other designs that were done. Kelton Cram also worked on the Rhino. Now, this... what, are you, what are your thoughts on the Rhino in general? I don't like the Rhino. I don't give a <laughs> shit about the Rhino. Uh... No one does, dude. He sucks. <laughs> I don't like the Rhino either. Because <laughs> they wanted I remember... to go for something different. <laughs> I remember him in the cartoon. Mm -hmm. he, he was memorable, I guess. But I don't know, man. I would just do some other villain, dude. He sucks. Well, you know he's coming back in that Craven movie. <laughs> this Paul Giamatti's? No, not not Paul Giamatti's version, but another guy is because there's there's a line in the trailer I think where he's like, "You know why they call me the Rhino?" And then like you see somebody transforming. Oh, yeah, that's right. So I guess I, he needs want, somebody to fight. But I want Pig Vomit back as uh, <laughs> as as Rhino. <laughs> Now, could you explain? I, I know you mentioned that in the Patreon. Could you explain that for the main show audience? Yeah, the I, know. People don't I know. wanted to see who was going to catch it before <laughs> okay. I explained well, it. Well, maybe, maybe I'll. I'll... No, it's up well, to you if you want to explain it. Oh, yeah. Well, if you caught it, 
up to now before I explain it, then you get extra points for us today. But it's from uh, Private Parts, Howard Stern's Private Parts. He calls him that in the movie. And Paul Giamatti, the incredible actor, I just keep calling pig vomit over <laughs> and over. He's a fucking great actor, though. But it, God damn, that name stuck for me forever, dude. I must have saw that movie in the mm-hmm. theater in like 97 or 98. Again, we're talking about Howard Stern's Private Parts. Let me know if you saw it. It was like one of those that was like insanely good. At least I remember it. Maybe it's not that good. But <laughs> I, I, I saw it several times when I was a kid. I was like, this is like way good. Anyway, back to Spider-Man shit right, and so the this Rhino. Is, this is a design for the Rhino. You can see on the gauntlets it says Oscorp on it. And uh, yeah, it's supposed to be like this mech suit, but... Doesn't look super rhino-y, does it? Other than just like the horn. It just looks like kind of a mess of metal blocks on there. No, you know, nothing against Kelton. He's just doing what he's yeah. been asked um, for the design by Mark Webb. But it's still. just nothing cool about this at all. I know he's doing a job. You know, mm-hmm. I don't want to insult his art, but it's just like, I don't know, dude. Like, <laughs> this, it's like, it's like after Halo became popular, uh, like they made every suit like this. And mm-hmm. it's like, dude. Just just make Halo suits like that. Don't we don't need yeah. every that game is popular, but don't we don't have to make every fucking suit like that. Right. It's so it's just so annoying to me. Well, unfortunately, we've got a lot of these. <laughs> you know, like, we've got like super bulky. More, but, yeah, super bulky. Tons of blocks and lines. Not much of a like face to this. Just and like, ask only yourself, who point. in the fuck would think this is cool? It's just well, sorry, apparently you know. Sony. <laughs> Sony producers at Sony. I don't know. It's just mm-hmm. not. It just doesn't look cool at all to me. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> this is another take on it that's different. Um, dude, this looks like a fucking anteater or some shit. Whatever with the hands like this, with like gorilla arms or it's stuff. Like a gorilla. Like it's, yeah. Honestly, it's better as a gorilla. At least this is somewhat interesting to me. I don't mm-hmm. love it either, but yeah. it's better than the last one. Yeah. Sorry. By the way, I'm going to be sniffling in this episode. I have some crazy fall allergies, everybody. Some crazy so. cocaine there. Yeah, I've just been doing piles of <laughs> white lightning. God damn it. God damn it. You want to get nuts? So, By uh, Jove, I think I've got it. <laughs> That's what he said when he wrote it. <laughs> Warren Scaring or whatever. Yep. Uh, so looking at, uh, Dan pulled up an interview from Kelton Cram who brought up that the reference for the rhino costume were, uh, Soviet tanks, which I guess you can see, whoops, we can see in, uh, the previous, uh, rhino costume stuff. The director, Mark Webb, had asked, uh, Kelton to do it that way, and, uh, the suit kept, quote unquote, changing due to alterations in the script, uh, but, uh, this is common, you know, he says this is common in, in concept for film, uh, but that's kind of what they, uh, you know, what we've been talking about, where, like, the design, the concept artists, like, they're not necessarily the ones who come up with the idea of stuff. They're just doing what the director no. wants, yeah. Yeah, even yeah. if they I... might themselves might not like it. That direction is cool, uh, mm-hmm. you know, Soviet tanks, but... <laughs> Dude, it's a cooler look. It's just they not doing it for me. Maybe yeah. if there was a cooler coloration on it or something, mm-hmm. you know. I mean, I know that character's like pretty much silver <laughs> because he's a he's rhino. A rhino but... so there's only so much you could do with yeah, that. Yeah, I don't know, man. It's just like, I don't know. It's, yeah, it's well, let's, let's move into the, the better villain of the movie. The Goblin. Okay. Is Kelton Cram's take on the Goblin. This is a lot different from what we would end up getting. A little bit more medieval in the type of look uh, mixed with... Uh, I mean, all sorts of stuff. I mean, the helmet's more of a face mask rather than a mask, uh, or in the case of the movie, no mask at all. Uh, the glider kind of has a metal, but like organic metal look to it in a way. It also kind of has that halo aesthetic. Yeah, a little bit. But this is, you know, I, I think this is okay. It's not, yeah, it's not super it. awesome, but yeah, it's, yeah. it's okay. The, the glider's mm-hmm. overdone as usual, but yeah, um, yeah, this is fine. This is, you know, be- much better. Yeah, much better. Kelton says they were looking for ways to make it aerodynamic and uh, were trying to ignore the rules of physics when designing technology that you know didn't quite exist at that time. So I don't mind if they ignored physics. Uh, who yeah. gives a fuck? It's all about the design. It's a comic book movie. <laughs> come, come on, who gives a shit? It's going to be real eventually anyway, probably. Mm-hmm. Yep. So another design on the glider with this area being you know sort of 
weirdly raised up right next to him. I don't know what that was supposed to be. Maybe that's like his control panel for the glider. It's, it's like a scooter, a scooter handles. Yeah, <laughs> that's what it looks like. This is a this is a no go. Take it off. Yeah, I don't like it. The other one's better. much better. Because at least the same silhouette, right? It's got the silhouette of the goblin. Yeah, I, you know, I don't know, dude. I don't know why. And I know they're experimenting, but. Mm-hmm. This is uh, to me. It's just obviously better this way. Yeah, you don't need to fuck around with this. It's got this wind drag and everything. Yeah, more rhino. <laughs> this is a little. <laughs> you know little, what? It's basically the components of how this works. This is better though. Yeah. Well, it's at least rhino like, and I think this is where they went with in in the movie, if I'm not mistaken. Where it can go on all fours. Uh, it opens up. You can reveal the guy in the mech suit. Like it's. It's closer for what it's supposed to be, the intention of it being some sort of metallic military suit from Oscorp. You know, it does its job. The guy in the the the, the guy in the cartoon and the comics, I guess mm-hmm. back in the day, I don't know what the current iteration is, but he was just like a big dude in a rhino suit. What it looked like <laughs> like yes. what was his actual like deal? He wasn't in a robot. I think like it's it, a suit is like a special suit. Right, like so, it's, okay. it's given him the like invulnerability. Uh, okay, let me let me do a quick look here to uh, okay. to verify this. Why, this why I haven't you do really that? read the Ryan yeah, comics. Yeah, well, I'll explain to the to the audience why while you do that. So, yeah. uh, you know, Ben's the guy that knows too much about Batman. If I if I would have asked him about a Batman, whatever, he would have answered immediately. But uh, this being Spider Man, he's couple percentage points out of his wheelhouse <laughs> and i'm always just learning That's a very kind way to say that <laughs> i'm always just learning with the audience anyway um but i did watch the cartoon mm-hmm. uh so i do have that familiarity i have read some spidey comics and i do love how funny they can be mm-hmm. um i love i love you know he, you know i love to laugh so uh <laughs> and you know yeah any like reading deadpool or or whatever, like that's one thing I, I'm like I love the X Men, but sometimes I you know they're not as funny. <laughs> right. It's true, they're, they're not quite as funny as some of the other characters. To be honest with you, right? There's some humor here and there, but uh, not as funny as Spider Man. Did you find it? Yeah, it's pretty much what I said. He's kind of given like invulnerable skin and superhuman strength. So like yeah, it's, the it's suit. a more organic thing. He puts well, on a suit. Uh, it's more of an experiment made him grow that artificial skin. Color. Oh. Okay, so he is not really he has suit, turned the, yeah, into a rhino, basically. Kind of, yeah, yeah. Just with his face still being human. Okay. Well, this reminds me of Transformers a little bit, so I like it. Mm-hmm. And it's it's bulky as fuck, but it's a rhino. What can you do? Like mm-hmm. this is it's supposed to be that way. It reminds me of Beast Wars also, mm-hmm. which I never really watched growing up, but people seem to love it. Mm-hmm. I was you know, but uh but yeah, this is cool. What do you think? For what it is, it's well, for what it's supposed to be. It's the best out of the rhino designs. Yeah, like they, they, yeah. the best one uh, won out because it's clearly a rhino. The other ones weren't clearly a rhino. So if you're going to do mech suit version of the rhino, uh, this is the way to go. Uh, and yeah, I agree about the the Beast Wars comparison. I hadn't thought about that until you brought that up. I'm like, oh yeah, it does look like that. Uh, it's you know, it's a robotic transforming <laughs> rhino. So yeah, it's hard to. Uh, I mean, yeah. I know you're a little bit less familiar with that stuff as well, mm-hmm. but but. Uh, yeah, I mean, look, this this could look at imagine this as a toy. This is yeah. very easily could be a toy, so I like it. Mm-hmm. Sure. Uh, looks up a pig vomit's face. <laughs> this looks so stupid. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just like his face is kind of a little bit off kilter, also. Because yeah. like, it's, they... it's clearly just a random photo of Paul Giamatti they slapped in there. It's not actually like him acting and they're just like yeah let's just see how it would look <laughs> and it looks I, weird i get it but they probably did this quickly you know i don't know dude it's you know it's fine they're just they're, they're, they're testing yeah. it out but this uh, is why they didn't go with this yeah <laughs> then go with any of the the helmet where you can clearly see his face in that they didn't go with it for good reason and yet that's what they experimented with for a bit this is very halo-ish yeah, hey, dude, Halo changed the game with like big bulky ass suits. Dudes wear mm-hmm. like in in uh, you know all kinds of movies and shit. It's just like it's like all right. I mean, down to steel in uh, uh, Superman, Superman and Lois. And Lois. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like you know, it's just like that. That influence went far and wide, dude. It did, yeah. So there's a bit of that in the Rhino. Uh, yeah. There's another take on that. Similar thing. Um, 
His face looks a little better here, though. I'm waiting for it to pop up on my end. There we go. Oh, here we yeah. go. What? Oh, okay. This one, yeah. Uh, yeah, this is a little bit. Yeah, this is a little bit better. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, simpler. Looks a little less ridiculous. Or we're just so used to seeing his face in it at this point in the third slide in a row that uh, yeah, we don't <laughs> mind it as much. Uh, yeah, it's cool. It's cool. It's a, it's better for sure. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I thought, you know, the, it's it's fine. It's it, yeah. well, don't, you don't like the, you like this one less. I like this one. Hold on. It's just they're just so busy. You know, like this is so fucking busy. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> they always think busy makes it more realistic, but no, it makes it shitty yeah. looking. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> Hate to say it, like again, yeah. the worst, the worst example that, but it also illustrates the best are the mm -hmm. Bay Transformers. Mm. God, that was the worst design ever. I hated all those. It's over designed. Over designed. Super busy. Who gives a fuck? You wasted too much on your render farm, rendering every goddamn little, um, you know, all the little gears and shit. Maybe some of that, but mm -hmm. they just went nuts with it. I mean, he made a fucking multi-billion dollar industry, so <laughs> right. what do I know? Yeah, but I feel like that would have happened even if they didn't go with the bulky designs. Just, you know, it's his, his action. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. It's a Transformers movie, so it's going to make money. <laughs> Spielberg was trying want. to do that for years too. Remember, Spielberg produced those, at least the first yeah. three. Like, mm -hmm. and the first one is like got some Spielberg type moments too. But you know, it was cool that Spielberg knew like this property has got something, mm -hmm. and he was right. You know, it's so cool. All right, now we're going into Electro, who's kind of more of the main villain of most of the movie. Yeah, uh, yeah. this is a little closer. To what we would get in the movie, uh, I get what they were trying to do. Even if uh, people sort of criticize sort of the blue and black look uh, that they did not go with when he came back in in No Way Home, that's the one they revised <laughs> the most, it seemed. Um, yeah, but yeah, it's kind of a vampire Nosferatu type of look. Uh, is kind of how it looks in this. Maybe not so much as in the movie, but in this. Uh, so kind of cool. It's okay, but maybe it needed some more. Um, yellow, you know, for lightning, like, it, like nah. black, black like, and yellow nah, or something. Yellow is too unrealistic. <laughs> yeah, we gotta make him look bland as fuck. <laughs> um, no, but I mean, it, it doesn't look. It doesn't look to me. It doesn't look bad. It's just yeah. there's. I don't know. It's just. It's okay. It's okay. Yeah, just make him look like the comic book character. Could have done something better. Would you want that yellow mask? I think the way they did it in No Way Home is a better way to do it. The yellow mask can be kind of ridiculous, but again, it's the fucking comic book. It's a comic book movie. So, like, find yeah. a way to make it work. You know, like, don't... It feels just uncreative when they're like, oh, let's just uh, do our own thing. And then what they come up with isn't exactly any better. This could be any movie, this design. Yeah. This, all, this, this could be all, the Borg. This, this, could, this could be the Borg very easily. This is Locutus right here, part two. <laughs> Um, Jamie Foxx is Locutus. Yeah, um, yeah, you're right. I mean, yeah, that's the thing. You you got to lean into the goofy. That that mm -hmm. mask is pretty fucking goofy. But if it was, like, yeah, if it was like actual lightning, like it just pops up as lightning really quickly, right? In No Way Home. In no Way Home. Yeah. Yeah, that was a cool way to do it for sure. Yeah. Uh, a look at shirtless version of Max with the uh, with that thing stuck to him. I don't even know what to call it. A electrode, diode, maybe electro thing, yeah, electrode, I guess. So I'm assuming, oh, we got Ironhead doing this, yeah, electro electrodes, yeah. Uh, so yeah, this is from Ironhead Studios, uh, and uh, yeah, they they worked on they worked on some of this from uh, Jared Morantz, who worked again as well on the um, some of the Batfleck uh, concept art we went over. So that okay. makes sense. Uh, now we are in the territory of the Rhino again, except this one <sighs> looks a little bit closer to the comic book image. You know, with the whole the face coming out of it and done in a way yeah. that doesn't look, it looks a little closer to the comic and less, you know, dumb looking as the Halo looking uh, <laughs> helmet designs that we saw earlier with Giamatti's face popping out. Like this yeah. one looks a little closer to what you would want. Like, I, actually, maybe this is better than than the other one that I said was probably the best so far because like this one at least looks like the comic book version, just like Robo style. It looks like yeah, like RoboCop. It's, yeah. it's cool. Yeah, I don't, yeah. I don't have much problem with that. So yeah, this is cool. Also from Ironhead, uh, and then these are other ones from uh, Ironhead of the uh, the Amazing Spider-Man suit, uh, Amazing Spider-Man two suit uh, and stuff. So now you know a little bit more 
traditional Spider-Man compared to what we got in the uh, the previous designs that we looked at. Yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. I mean, this is like, I'm looking at it, it's like kind of, it's standard, but it's good, you know, mm-hmm. it's solid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You kind of want standard, too, for uh, yeah. some of this. Like we saw over the last episode where they were trying to fuck around with so much of the uh, <laughs> suits that we were just like, no, just stick with it. What we got in the in the movie was the best out of the designs they were thinking of. They really, yeah, so they arrived at the best one for sure. Mm-hmm. I guess what makes it uniquely Andrew Garfield's is how the legs of the spider at the bottom sort of elongate further down the body. That's oh, unique to his. right. That I do like that. That's kind of cool. Yeah, yeah. Because he's got to have something distinctive. So, like, Toby's got the raised webbing, the raised yeah. silver webbing, and Andrew Garfield's got the uh, the elongated legs, and then Tom Holland just has a million suits. <laughs> you know? Yeah, he's got a bunch. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I do like that. It's kind of in keeping with the uh, kind of, you know, Dark Knight take they were going for. It's a little bit more badass. It's darker. Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, more of Electro. Uh, it looks like the version on the left, they didn't have Jamie Foxx in mind. It seems like just a random random dude. And then the one on the right is a little closer to what we got in the movie with more of the blue and the uh, you know, it's sort of translucent look to uh, his skin is even more apparent with the lightning. I, I feel like, look, I wasn't there, I don't know, but like, is that what the sk- is that what skin does when you're struck by lightning? I think that I, I feel like God, that's what they were thinking. Yeah. Cause it's gotta be realistic. It's gotta be realistic. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, like they want to go with like a, ele- uh, what do you call it? Elect, electra, electric, uh, injury, Victim. or I don't know, yeah. lightning, 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 stri- lightning strike injury or whatever you call it on the skin. And they, they took that and made that for Jamie Foxx. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, the the way of thinking is there, but mm. I don't know, man. This is like yeah. just a plain black suit, too. Yeah, that too. Like the actual costume didn't really do much. Yeah. Uh, and then we got looks at uh, Electro when he is in the Ravencroft Institute, I think, uh, where he's been captured. Um, They're just afraid it's going to be too silly. <laughs> it's just too silly even though I we got so, a yeah. fucking spider guy with a goddamn in this movie a fire hydrant a fire helmet <laughs> and uh you know what i mean holding yeah, the, yeah. Fucking, the, the, the fire hose the movie was shit. silly enough as it was you know yeah like, <laughs> what are we we got a rhino we got giamatti and a rat it's like what why where they stop is funny to me yeah there's a limit apparently so there's a limit. This looks like the guy in yeah. the Prometheus. Remember that? The, oh um, yeah, yeah. The engineers, I think. Yeah, buff dude. Mm-hmm. Uh, and like all white makeup. That's what it yeah, looks like. Yeah. So kinda. I guess that that's what they were uh, they're going for. Uh, for maybe. This. Yeah, maybe not like necessarily the direct influence, but it's kind of a similar look. Yeah. Uh, for for Max or Electro in this, so uh, kind of a bit of a Vitruvian Man sort of uh, esque mm. type of thing too. To these in terms of his, how he's being held, but yeah, uh, it's uh, it's interesting to see a lot of the development just to see how much because this is still the era I feel where um, MCU is getting on the ground and and MCU is where they're like saying hey like we're just bringing comic book designs to life during this era and it's okay that things look kind of silly we're gonna make it work and I don't mm-hmm. think it had quite uh, spread out to other areas. So it hadn't quite spread out to, yeah, uh, definitely not to Sony at this point. So that's why Rhino looks the way he does, Electro looks the way he does, and I guess Green Goblin looks the way he does. Yeah. Oh well. Yeah. So uh, we have a lot more designs of uh, these guys in terms of the villains and Spider-Man, as well as the deleted scenes. But we will jump into those after the break. <laughs> All right, everyone, it's October, and once again, it's time for announcements. So, uh, for those who have been following along, Newverse Creative has produced a three-parter of my adaptation of the Batman 89 comic series by Sam Hamm and guests Sam Hamm and Joe Quinones. Uh, It is a streamlined version of the comic story, and because we couldn't have Easter eggs that were visual, since it's it's an audio drama, uh, I put in some Easter eggs that are in the narration. Now, I believe it might be out by the time that this gets released, but Newverse Creative will, um, you know, they previously announced or they previously released it in three parts. There will be an overall full cut released in one of the entire audio drama, 
that will be slightly extended as well. So if you actually heard it in all three parts, you can hear the full length version all edited together uh, with uh, a slightly extended ending. Uh, and it'll also include some uh, trailers of upcoming audio dramas that I was involved with, including ones that you might have heard previously uh, before in uh, another episode where we edited it in. So you'll be hearing a lot more of those uh, coming soon. So uh, that's what I got when it comes to the numerous creative stuff. Stay tuned and uh, subscribe to them as well if you want to hear more of their stuff. Now, it is also time for our charity drive, and uh, this one is for a friend of the podcast. So, uh, Billy Grysack is in charge of, or uh, in charge of the clubhouse, club uh, room, everything entertainment. And that was something that we shout out to every now and then in the uh, in past episodes, and they sort of helped us. Like, that's, it was through that room that I met Rob Ailing um, over there, and nice. uh, Billy, uh, unfortunately, is, um, uh, he is... Basically, he was a cancer survivor, and unfortunately, he has cancer again. Uh, so, uh, in battling cancer, he has set up a GoFundMe over at GoFundMe.com slash F slash Billy hyphen Grisek. And uh, go over there, help support Billy. Uh, and, uh, you know, he's a great guy. He's a huge fan of superhero stuff. And I uh, just want to do what I can to help him out. So, please do that. Please check it out. The link is in the description. Yep. And then over to Andrew. Okay, everybody. So uh, please check out metalforce.ninja, www.metalforce.ninja. By the time you guys get this episode, the Kickstarter will be over. Um, So, yeah. uh, And also, uh, the Twitter is, you know, Super Metal Force. So you can find us there. And the Instagram is Super Metal Force. No, no, no. Sorry. The Twitter is Metal Force Movie. And the Instagram is Super Metal Force, and the Facebook is Super Metal Metal Force. So check us out there. Um, the way you can keep up to date with us as we continue all of our things, as far as Metal Force is concerned. And then, uh, and also thank you to everybody that donated. So awesome. Uh, so we will uh, continue to chug along here. And uh, the other thing before. Uh, I'm done is uh, Gaming Gaiden is coming back for a second season and we've, we're close to finishing the recording. The way we do Gaming Gaiden is we, we record the whole thing and then edit and then release you know, those 10 episodes in 10 weeks. So season two is almost done entirely and we'll start releasing soon, probably November. We'll see. Uh, so yeah, stay tuned for that. If you guys are into that kind of thing, it's a video game podcast I do. And it's called Gaming Gaiden. That's G-A-I-D-E-N. Gaming mm-hmm. Gaiden. Nice. All right. And that's it for October. Thanks again, guys. We have returned to continue uncovering the Amazing Spider-Man 2. But uh, first, I wanted to address what Andrew had asked for, which was a comparison between the two different suits that Andrew okay. Garfield wore uh, in these movies. So if we take a look at this, it's a little, it was hard for me to find like a, as, you know, basically a, same, a similar shot uh, yeah, yeah, on the right cool to the one on the left. So this is what I could get. There's obviously some battle damage on Spider-Man on the one on the left. Uh, but we can see that the shape of the eyes are different. They're a little bit more uh, yellow as well versus the very white ones uh, in the second movie. Um, could also be because the one on the left is set at night while the other one is set during the day, but it also just feels like the colors are much brighter in the second movie, um, when it comes to the red and blue. Um, he's got the belt looking deal too. Yeah. That's the the next thing. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, He does. Uh, so that, that adds another dynamic to it. Um, and I believe when Garfield came back for no way home, he wore the one from the first movie rather than the second. I could be wrong on that, but that's what I had read. So I might like the first one more, too, actually, mm. if I'm being honest. I mean, I'm, I'm missing the belt, but I don't know. I think I like one more than two. You like two more? I'll be honest. When I watched both movies, I didn't really notice much of a difference between the uh, two. I know. I, did, I didn't either. The Spider-Man thing. Yeah, I mean, I, I like the brighter colors in general yeah. for Spider-Man, yeah. but I'm also, I know that right a lot of it is because there's a lot of night stuff in the first one and the second one, like there's very vibrant colors 
throughout it. So like it's it could just be a bias due to how the rest of the movie is more comic booky looking. I think in the second one compared to right. the first one, uh, at yeah. least in colors and cinematography, not necessarily in terms of the designs as we've seen. Uh, mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, I mean. Out of the two, the one on the the right, the one on the second movie, probably is closer to the comics. But it, like the differences are kind of just feel a little bit more minimal. They're not as like drastic compared to the the bat suits, you know, where like they're right. we have very obvious opinions on those. With Spider Man suits, I'm just like, well, is it red and blue and have webbing and a spider on his chest with big eyes? <laughs> All right, cool. <laughs> right, Spider Man. <laughs> right. So. Maybe we're just not the people to to uh, to rank Spidey suits because I feel like most of them would just get A's and S's. You know, like, right? Just, it's good. Yeah, moving on. <laughs> moving on. All right. So this is what I wanted to say for after the break. This is an interesting design for what they were going for with the Green Goblin. It looks like they were playing around with the idea of, hey, let's not give him a mask. Let's give a face uh, to it. So uh, they were also going for a darker look because remember at this point we had already seen. Willem Dafoe's version of the Goblin in uh, the first Spider-Man movie in 2002, and then Harry's Goblin in, in uh, Spider-Man 3. So uh, given that this was another version of that with a Harry Osborn Goblin, they wanted to do something a little different in design. Uh, also, the face kind of looks like Jackie Earl Haley to me uh, on this. Maybe they just yeah. used him as a base. Uh, it's pretty cool. Um Yeah. Yeah, maybe you needed the you needed a face to really mm-hmm. seal the deal here, but I don't. Yeah. this is I don't mind this. It's okay. We get more of a close up here, uh, as well. Looks a little uh, scroll like in the close up here. Again, we're what back a... to Halo ish. Yeah, this is Halo mixed with a scroll. Is what it looks like. Right. Yeah, a little scroll for sure. Uh, mm-hmm. I don't like the helmet that much, but I like the. Yeah, and I don't get the. I don't get the point of the helmet if he's going to turn into a goblin anyway. Like, why would you want to hide that face? <laughs> I know, sense. man. Yeah, I don't know. They don't know what they're doing over there. <sighs> Just kidding. <laughs> this Weta, Weta doesn't know what they're doing is what I'm, what I'm saying. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. No, they are, they're doing, they're at the whims of the director on this one. I know. I'm just messing around. Yeah. Uh, obviously not much of a secret identity when Oscorp is printed right on the chest of this. Great. But I get it. It's a, uh, it's supposed to be a prototype from the company in this version. They kind of took from the Raimi film when it came to that origin. Mm-hmm. Uh, again, another version of uh, another rendering of the Spider-Man suit. Pretty okay. much what you would expect from Spider-Man. Um, another look, yes, too, cool. at the stuff. You can kind of look at how uh, you know the elongated legs on both the front and the back uh, are very visible on this. And now, you know, we've noticed the, you notice the belt thing. The belt thing is here, too. So yeah. uh, that's... You know, gradually making our way towards what we would see in the movie. Back to the Rhino. This is... Uh, so this is back when apparently they were thinking of it being just a guy in a Rhino suit before it turned into more of a mech suit. But this okay. is a little closer to the aesthetic in the comic. I don't know how Paul Giamatti would look in this because yeah. you know his body doesn't look like that. So it might have just been because of that reason that they decided to uh, to change it up. Yeah, Paul Giamatti, case. he must be like five, four or something. Right? <laughs> I mean, no yeah, offense, I'm like, if but... that's the case, why cast Paul Giamatti if you know that that's not going to look good with the rest of the writing? Yeah. I feel so... like he hasn't been in much lately. Is he? Is he in some show that I'm not watching or something? He's, he was on Billions. Um, oh, so that's exactly it. That's, I have never yeah. seen that show. I haven't. Yeah, I mean, yeah, people love it. He's investigating Damian Lewis on that, or was. Um, so yeah. Th- this and then there's more of the mech warrior look which i don't like as much it's, oh, there's a bit of iron monger in this too yeah it's you know it's, it's, i still like it more in that soviet tank one but yeah I don't, <laughs> right I don't, yeah i don't love it it's more you obviously think, rhino with that big horn would you have liked it if they just did like the comic that we just looked up two seconds ago and like it was just a guy that had his skin changed or do, if you... it was not Paul Giamatti, because I feel like if it's Paul Giamatti and that, then yeah, that does feel ridiculous. Be different, yeah, for sure. But yeah, if it was yeah. okay, let's say it was not Paul Giamatti, right? Yeah, You'd... I'd be fine with it. I mean, look, there's more. There's so many other ridiculous things in this world. It's a Spider-Man world, you know. You've got yeah, a gob- You've got an actual Goblin guy. This time he's not in in a mask. He's actually been turned into a Goblin. Right. This is the type right. of world we live in. 
So a guy right. who also has impenetrable skin due to a similar experiment, that fits into that world. Another dude fell into a vat of electric eels. <laughs> this is the world that this movie lives in. That's how Blanca Damn. and Street Fighter learned to do his electrocution <laughs> move, too. Apparently, in the story, was he? <laughs> the, he fell. He fell. In, he fell from a plane, I think, into <laughs> some lake in Brazil or something, and learned to electrocute himself from electric eels or something. <laughs> That was the that was the explanation back in the day. Anyway, I don't know what it is now, but but that's funny. Those they're both eels. Damn, gotta watch where you fall. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, we got those two versions. All right, now we're back to the. This is interesting. So this is back to the Green Goblin. This looks like a flat out alien, but what you might notice is that we got the incorporation of the um, the big horn in the back of the head that was yeah. in the, uh, the Willem Dafoe mask design. Um, that's supposed to be, you know, the back of the goblin hood, I guess, in the uh, in other versions of the comics. You can kind of see a face in there, but yeah, it just it doesn't look like the Green Goblin. It just looks like they're trying to do some sort of alien character. It's it's the tone just feels different. Yeah, it's too too sci fi ish. Yeah, definitely. So, not my thing. Um, this is kind of creepy when we see the face, you know. Yeah, um, the face through it, but it's just not. It, it's, I'm glad they didn't go with that look because it's, it's a little too much like, well, we tried to do what Willem Dafoe did, but try to make it edgier and scarier, and it just doesn't, it's not as iconic. It just looks yeah. like an alien in a spacesuit. Uh, continuing the alien Again. look with the halo, right? Yeah, it's kind of, kind of, I mean, less so than the others, but yeah. I don't I think know. it's the way that the, the, the way that the helmet looks. You know, the, the yeah. opaque look on the front. Yeah. Yeah, I'm glad they didn't do this. Yeah, same here. Uh, but we get to look at more of it. All right, what we else? Tried a lot of it, huh? What else is here? Okay, this is different. That's cool. That's better. This is just flat out he's been turned into a goblin, which, you know, they're trying to pull from the Ultimate Comics, where he actually is turned into a literal monster. It's not just him wearing a, a costume. Uh, this kind of looks like uh, Ebony Maw from uh, Infinity War as well. The dude who was, <laughs> yeah, you know, who worked for uh, Thanos and was telling everybody that I like Thanos that guy. was coming. Yeah, so yeah, uh, he looks more like that than uh, a Harry Osborn Green, Go- Green Goblin. But th- I like this better than the helmet look, for sure. Definitely, dude. It would have been so cool, like a little bit of body horror kind of thing. Mm-hmm. They didn't go anywhere near that, right? That's no, like this it. is close to what we got. <laughs> Dane Dehan. Yeah, with uh, uh, makeup yeah. and uh, yeah, it's just not. It doesn't. It's not quite. Maybe something that's in between these two, you know, because this might be a little too far, but go farther than this. Yeah, yeah. I don't. Maybe they should have made him bald too. I don't know. Oh, yeah, that's too. Yeah, because the hair kind of ruins it too. Mm-hmm. Got the emo swoop. <laughs> Somebody had to do it. If Peter Parker wasn't. <laughs> gonna, gonna wear the hair and do dancing. Yeah, exactly. Uh, this is the electric eel vat that uh, Max falls into. <laughs> Gotta watch where you fall. I uh, know, you really do. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, this is other variations of the origin of um, of Electro, but clearly they were, you know, very. They had their hearts set on that from the from the script. It's uh, dumb, but has Electro ever fought Electra? <laughs> <laughs> just because Probably. their names they must Probably. have done that shit just because their names at one point I'm sure Spider-Man's like Electro I mean Electro I mean what, whatever and then yeah, yeah 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 yeah. has some gag in that yeah uh, this is a little closer to the ultimate comic version of uh, Electro where he's where he's blue um, so this is probably where you know a lot of that inspiration came from uh, and then we kind of get this kind of cool spe- skeleton looking, or not skeleton, really. It's more accurately the vascular system. That's what it looks like. Yeah, the th- right. did we get a shot like that in the movie? That would have been cool. We might have. Um, so I think we got it in definitely in No Way Home. Yeah, when in No Way Home when he first is like forming uh, when they first meet. Um, but I don't remember this in the movie. Let us know in the comments. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, he was he was cool, but I don't I don't know. No offense to him. I mean, he's Jamie Foxx. What does he give a shit? But like, I don't remember. I remember him a little bit less than the other villains. I guess I don't know. Even the Rhino. 
I've, I, well, what actually, I, I forgot Rhino. <laughs> Rhino was in No Way Home. Oh, no, no, no. I, oh, I thought you meant uh, the other villains in... in no, I meant, I meant No Way Home. Of oh, course, okay. he, of yeah, course yeah, I remember yeah. him in this one. He's the main one in this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, he's a little bit less memorable in comparison. Because it's like, when you get closer to... Um, like, he's the latest villain. The most recent villain who was in that. So it, there's a little bit less nostalgia for somebody who was so yeah. recent. Like, No Way Home was... Um, a little less than 10 years from the amazing Spider-Man, the first one. So like the lizard, okay. Like it's been a while. Electro has been a little bit, it's, he's the most recent and stuff. And yeah, it's, it's bringing back an old villain, but it's not quite the same. It didn't hit nearly as hard as, you know, Defoe and Molina coming back. Those are the heavy right, hitters. Right, 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 right. Yeah. Uh, Plus so he's more. in a movie that was kind of panned. Yeah, that too. That too. So more designs here. Uh, another attempt at the halo aesthetic mixed with the goblin uh this time we can't really see what's happening through the helmet but they try to incorporate the ears with the helmet as well as like the long the long hands and fingers and and the pumpkin bomb as you can see on in his uh left hand so it's interesting but it's okay it's better than the uh, some of the others yeah yeah it's better than the alien one yeah for sure uh speaking of What's going on here? So this is another take on on uh, a transform goblin, and again, I think they just went a little too far with this. Now he just looks like an alien. Um, this is before he was cast, I guess. Yeah, that too. And then they didn't need to do that with the hair. What he's got like a <laughs> faux hawk. Uh, this looks like kind of a quick pass, man. To be honest with you, I don't know what to think about yep. this. this. Next, is, um, yeah, not not great. No. Uh, I guess this is the drawn-out design of what we saw here. But, uh, you know, a little bit more drawn-out because you got a similar hairstyle. But, yeah, just overly designed. Again, it's the Green Goblin. Like, you don't need to make him look like this. It's, um... <laughs> and being yellow is interesting. It should be green, though, right? <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, I, I don't hate this. It's... But, mm. you know, it's not the best take either, I guess. I don't know. No. <sighs> so much is going on here. Yeah. Uh, so this is the attempt to do a helmet mixed with the transformed look, but he, I don't know, it just looks like a stupid visor. Stupid him. bike helmets. You know, there's some bike helmets that do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. have, like for wind resistance, I guess. But yeah, it just looks like he's uh, being annoying to people in traffic. <laughs> <laughs> no, he it's, totally does. <laughs> it's fucking bikers, dude. Looks like he wears those like really tight um, suits they wear. Yeah, this spandex. does look like the douche version of of uh, the Harry Goblin, you know. <laughs> this just looks terrible. <laughs> yeah. I don't just know, man. What can you helmet. say about this? Yeah, it covers everything but his chin. <laughs> that visor, like, what is that all mm -hmm. about, dude? It's terrible. They were just playing around, so obviously it's probably because of this that they were like, you know what, forget about the helmet. Let's just get rid of it. Yeah. Uh, again, this is a little closer to the Dane DeHaan type of look. His hair is a little closer to what we got in the movie. Still overly designed from the neck down. Mm-hmm. Because it's like, what the hell's going on with that? Yeah. Um, we've got Giamatti again. This in this version, he's bald with a beard. He's got that Heisenberg look. Yeah. In the mech suit, but. Could anyone really guess that this is the rhino from looking at this? No, you need to have that head you need thing that or horn. something. Which maybe he does with this gold thing at the top, but I don't know. Then it would just look like there's a gold horn at the top of a giant mech suit thing. Like it still yeah. needs that. It needs to look like a rhino. So at least the one in the movie looks like it when he's like on all fours and stuff. Yeah. I don't know. It's whatever. It's a rhino. <laughs> I don't know, but it's just not, not great. <laughs> uh, this is from the pivotal scene where you see the goblin facing Spider-Man, but down below you see Gwen falling in her uh, infamous de death scene. So uh, this is the concept art that we have of that uh, very pivotal scene here. Um, looks like it's a, it is the the clock tower, but it's a little less intricate in, in terms of what's inside the clock tower. Uh, but okay. uh, kind of gives us an overall idea of what we would end up getting in the movie. Uh, yeah, that was a powerful scene. 
I mean, her I don't dying, know what to right? make of this. Oh, oh that, yeah, yeah, her yeah, dying. This, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is like a bug. This this is scorpion. This might be the scorpion. I might have jumped the gun and included something that I was going to save. Uh, yeah, this might be the scorpion actually, given that tail <laughs> rather than uh, rather than Gobby, which would then be definitely an unused thing because I don't remember seeing a scorpion thing. Because there's that scene that they were trying to set up the Sinister Six. You know, yeah, like, we need a team. I want to make it small. Is what he tells uh, the gentleman Gustav Fires. So like Fires walks in, and you can see like in the background there's like the vulture wings and the Doc Ock tentacles and stuff. Um, as he's about to recruit, uh, you know, Sergey, I think is his name, the, the Rhino. So um, this could be the suit for the Scorpion. So, it could yeah. be. Uh, I jumped the gun on this, but yeah, fine. Looks like the early prototype kind of kind of thing. Yeah, it's just, I don't know, something about that helmet. Because it's like, it it's doesn't, I I have to study what a scorpion face looks like. But to, to me, it looks like a flying bug face, a generic bug face on it. It'd be tough scorpion. to do, because isn't it like, it's like, like like a crab or something, like it's like kind of flat. It'd well, be hard to make a helmet yeah. like that, just the way the scorpion body is. It doesn't even the need tail. to be a helmet, it's just a mask in the, in the comics. <laughs> Yeah, I know. Well, just so, are you a fan of that? Are you a fan of that uh, villain? (laughs) Would you? I mean, are you dying for Scorpion to be? I'm not dying for Scorpion. I know a lot of people want to see him because they had, uh, I think his name is Michael Mando, as uh, the guy who becomes Scorpion in in Homecoming. And he's the guy who asks Michael Keaton, like, you know who he is. Um, But. which could be cool to see, but he's he's not really one of my favorites. I think his design is much cooler than what we see here, though. Yeah. So, what Spider-Man villain would you want to be as like main villain in a movie that we haven't seen yet? We haven't seen before. At least, I mean, maybe as an Easter egg, like what you just talked about, but like not, you know, not in a suit or anything. Right. Well, one aspect is how about we see him face off against these guys who Sony is convinced need to be anti-heroes in their own universe. Like, wouldn't it be nice to actually see him go up against Venom in a real thing? I mean, I guess that already happened in Spider-Man 3, but, like, even then, Carnage Carnage didn't actually get to fight Spider-Man in the movie. How insane is that? I uh, know, it's nuts. Uh, so there's that. I know Morbius is a joke, but, like, that would have been a cool crossover, Morbius versus Spider-Man and Blade at some point. I think Morbius... 2000s. Morbius was not was done dirty. I I think a yeah. Spider Man versus Morbius movie would be sick, but yeah, now it's be. like got a bad taste in everybody's mouth. Yeah, yeah. You'd you'd have to wait a while to reboot that one. Yeah. So uh, there's that, and then um, I mean, Scorpion could be cool as in the way that they used um, kind of like how the unmade Spider Man four was going to do the Mysterio. You know, where like you have him for a bit, or even how Rhino was done in this movie. You know, just mm-hmm. have him for a little bit. I don't know about a main villain. That's why when people are just like, we want to see this guy be Scorpion, the guy from Homecoming. I'm just like, you're going to follow No Way Home with those five villains, which is the <laughs> Scorpion. <laughs> yeah, I know. I don't know. So man. it's a hard act to follow. For sure. Yeah. Uh, all right. This is what looks like another take on Rhino that's just really inc- ill-conceived. Um, I don't know what's going on here, dude. Like, this is a... Uh... It's he looks like green? that one Power Rangers villain. But green. <laughs> Which, the guy's name. Oh, Zed? Lord Zed? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. know who you're talking about. Oh, <laughs> that would be funny. He's at the full mask here. Lord, <laughs> yeah. Quick trivia. Lord Zed was made by the American side. That was not made by the Japanese side of the oh. show. Yeah, it's Damn. an American-made villain, but he's iconic at this point. Mm. Uh, but this is, uh, yeah, too much going on, dude. And why green? I don't know. That is green, right? It looks green. Unless this is supposed to be for Scorpion, but then why would he have the horn thing? Right. But, now that you mention it, is it Scorpion? <laughs> but it's Maybe bad it we don't know. Yeah, that's the thing. Yeah, exactly. Like, is it really on us that we don't know who the fuck this is? No. I might go with Scorpion on this one, dude. This is crazy, but he has the... I mean, that horn throws me off, but... The horn threw me off, too, yeah. The green, everything else, like, I don't know. All right, let me look this up. Hold he's on. not he's not quite as big and bulky as it's a rhino, yeah. Rhino and a rhino guy. Yeah. Or, but he's too big for Paul Giamatti. And that's not Paul Giamatti's face. Maybe it was before anybody was cast. It's a little bit still, more like Vin Diesel. Yeah. A little bit <laughs> Vin Diesel is a scorpion. Yeah, so like 
you know, maybe maybe it is. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> Somebody got mixed up in the design team. Like, all right, so you want a rhino and a, uh, a scorpion cross. All right, coming right up. Like, no, no, no. We need the rhino and the scorpion, not rhino scorpion. But Just a bunch of animals fighting each other. <laughs> right. It's <laughs> kind of what it is. Uh, this is another take on the Spider-Man suit. Very metallic looking, kind of all over the place in the, the midsection there. Uh, yeah, I'm glad we got what we got. It's funny you 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 call out the midsection, but to me it's always these leg patterns. Well, yeah, the they're, legs They're too. just way yeah. off to me. That's just not a cool design for mm-hmm. legs. Yeah. At least the... I mean, it's broken up. It's not ideal. I get what you're saying, but... It's a lot closer to, you know, the better traditional design than these these ones at the bottom. The and the eyes are too protruding out. They look like they're just kind of tacked on to the head. Yeah, that too. You know, it, it doesn't look right. It, looks, it yeah. honestly looks cheap. Those look eyes. at his fingers, too. His fingers being different colors from the rest of his... Uh... That doesn't bother me too much. Yeah. All right. That's uh, fine. Moving on. Uh, this is a little bit more traditional, just in general. Uh, the, but again, midsection is played around with a lot more. Third one is not no good. Far it's all right, over the place again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't like that that midsection. Let's see here. Uh, well, one and two are fine. Well, I guess two is the best, isn't it? I don't like this. I don't like the Spidey symbol on the on number one. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, I wasn't looking there. I was just looking at. The, how like the first one has like a belt thing. I'm like, oh yeah, that's probably the best out of those. But like the the, the one, on yeah, the, the one in the middle has the best spider insignia for sure. You know what though? The boots, they're not good. I don't like. What the kind of mix one. mix one and two? Mix one and two. We got it. Yeah, got the, the third the third one's got the best boots because they just look like boots. I feel like I've seen like non traditional suits that I've liked mm-hmm. as much as the traditional, but just not in these movies. Mm-hmm. Concept art. Yeah, like I, I, I'm okay with them going away from traditional. I mean, really traditional. Sim having the goddamn web wings, right? So mm-hmm. like, mm-hmm. I don't mind if they're gone. I mean, I love the McFarlane one, the ultimate, the ultimate redesign. But, uh, um, yeah, and I've this, there's others too. I'm sure I've liked. It's just not, not these. Not these. No. Yeah. Yeah. Just not, just not the way to go. Okay. <laughs> this is what a no. The fuck? We're just <laughs> moving right along. I don't know Look what's at those happening. Boots. Look at those boots. Look at the everything. It's just terrible. Oh, yeah, that too. Yeah. Uh, it basically combines everything that we didn't like about all the others into one. I'm trying to find the something back I like him, about it. You can't think of anything you like about it? It was blue and red. I mean, it's partly red at least. Barely. <laughs> Barely. It looks like pink. Like Maybe gray. the lighting, but pink, pink boots. It's like gray and pink. Yeah. Yeah. All right, moving this on. This is not cool, man. Spider-Man fighting Electros, you know, the electricity. Um, so this is a cool shot. Um, yeah, it's cool. Not much to say about that. Another look at uh, what looks like Goblin with, like, wings. <laughs> this is a glider. The glider acting as wing. That's interesting. Yeah. Maybe he so puts it on as a jetpack. That's a fun yeah. idea. Mm-hmm. So he's got little Would goblin wings, and then he can right. take them off. And have they done this? This is makes a more cool sense. Idea. Yeah, it makes more sense really than a glider, right? Because if you think about goblins and traditional monsters and stuff, like wings and them being a flying goblin with wings makes a lot more sense than them being on a glider thing. I think. Uh, do we step onto something? They must have done this in the comics. <laughs> they must have. Yeah. He can. He can do uh, both. He can. It's like a. It's like a either or. Whatever he chooses, like he can mm-hmm. ride or. Right yeah. on it like a drone or mm-hmm. or use it as a jetpack. Yeah. So that's cool. a cool idea. It is. Uh all right. So now we're heading into something that uh I've been reserving, which are the deleted scenes. Now there's a lot of deleted scenes that are featured, you know, you can watch them on YouTube as well as what's uh been reported or at least um you can watch what's on the home release. But one of the things that was reported was an entire subplot with Mary Jane. Remember, we had Gwen Stacy for these movies. Mary Jane was mainly reserved in the previous trilogy. But Mary Jane was in these in The Amazing Spider-Man 2 and then cut completely from it. Oh, my God. Uh, so is, what was the actress's name? Shailene Woodley. 
from okay. um, was it Divergent? I think she's in. She was in. She went on to some young adult. Uh, God, I forgot series. about. She was kind of yeah. big for a hot second. Maybe she's doing yeah. something else that I don't know of. Yeah. But, uh, uh, so yeah. she was. She was MJ, and they dyed her hair red. And this is a shot of um, her with Andrew Garfield's Peter Parker. I forgot she uh, was. I, I remember hearing about this, and I forgot mm-hmm. she was cut entirely as well. Yep. Oh yeah. my god, dude. So uh, we have some information on that subplot thanks to a concept artist named Gregory Hill. So Gregory Hill says, quote, in the script, MJ and her father have recently moved in next door to Peter and his aunt. So kind of similar to uh, the Raimi movies where Mary Jane is literally the girl next door. Uh, it says he's run into her a few times and seen that her father has a habit of getting drunk and treating MJ badly. If I remember right, the scene I illustrated, and here we go here. Oh, wait. Well, this is a scene with her and Gwen Stacy. Uh, but uh, here we go. Uh, the scene I illustrated has her dad going into the garage and suddenly getting hoisted upside down from the rafters where he meets Spider-Man. And he gets a dressing down for how badly he treats his daughter. I think that's about the only MJ scene which was originally in the script. No, there was one other where she and Gwen which is where this picture comes from, briefly meet outside of Peter's house. Okay. So there we go. The uh, the scrapped appearance of MJ in this movie. Uh, Sad. Which, you know, it's presumably because they knew they were going to kill off Gwen Stacy and that like they wanted to set up MJ so that there would be a love interest in another movie, which was a gamble when you think about it. I mean, Emma Stone was huge at this time. So like the yeah. idea of like, yeah, we're and they had, you know, their chemistry is one of the best things about the uh, these movies. So to be like, all right, we're going to stay true to the comic and actually kill her off, like pull your heartstrings and make you really care about this relationship and then kill her off and then bring in someone else <laughs> to be the main love interest as Emdre, that was a huge creative gamble. And mm-hmm. um, who knows where that could have gone, you know? We'll they see. probably had the uh, like Empire Strikes Back thing where they want the second one in the trilogy to be the darkest yeah you know i, I yeah, wonder if that, that was part of the thinking yeah yeah so uh yeah this is what we know so far of that there's a bunch of other set pictures of uh woodley in the role as mj which we'll show in the patreon but the main you know the meat of that subplot seems to be that she's sort of just planted as like the neighborhood girl next door spider-man threatens her dad who knows i don't know who the actor was for that and uh or if they even shot that and then, um, you know, she's presumably somebody who he'll get to know more about as the franchise was going to go on. So, uh, okay. the most famous, of course, is this alternate ending where Peter meets his dad, who's actually been in hiding and is not dead, and he faked his death. Um, so, Richard Parker reveals that he's alive when Peter's visiting Gwen's grave. He knows that Peter is Spider Man, and. Um, He's the one who pushes Peter to go back and be Spider-Man, uh, bringing up that uh, you know losing hope and losing the fight uh, will mean that Gwen died for nothing. And it's through Richard Parker that he tells Peter, quote, with great power comes great responsibility. So this is interesting because it sort of foreshadows what we would get in No Way Home where a character who's not Uncle Ben uh, but is another family member tells him the famous line. Because if we re- remember even though that line is really closely associated to Uncle Ben uh, and is said by Uncle Ben in in the Ultimate Spider-Man comics, in the original Spider-Man comic, Amazing Fantasy 15, it is said by the narrator. It is not actually said by Uncle Ben. Oh, right, right, right. So you could give that to another character um, to to teach Peter that lesson, and that's what happens pretty much, Uh, at least in this alternate version where his dad was meant to still be alive and... um, tell him this and who knows where that would have gone from there or maybe we will when we cover you know some of the plans that were in store for the continuations here but i wasn't aware of this at all it's on youtube if you want to see the scene yeah you can talk about it uh wow. after you see it but uh it's it's a hell of a scene too because um it's it's deleted but that doesn't mean that it's not well acted because you know you've right. got andrew garfield in disbelief uh, that his father's back and the way that he reacts to his father coming back is it's so raw and so real, especially when you know there's a Peter who just lost Gwen. So like the right. way that he portrays it, God, he's so good. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's, yeah, he's great, man. It, it's 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 one where I'm just like, it's kind of a mess, this whole thing or this whole subplot with the father, but if it was going to pay off like this, 
I would have allowed it. Especially if, like, I don't think this would have single-handedly saved the movie and this version of the franchise. There might not have even been a third one, even if they put this alternate ending in. But it would have at least paid off better, I think. Mm-hmm. It just acted re- really well. Yeah. Yeah, that's that sucks that it was cut, man. But, yeah. uh... Yeah, crazy. I had no idea about any of this. Yeah. So, yeah, these are the uh, deleted scenes of uh, Amazing Spider-Man. The Amazing Spider-Man 2. And uh, I think that is... Oh, no, no, no. Sorry. There's one more thing. I almost forgot. Um, we have one more concept art thing for a deleted scene. This is a container for a severed head at Oscorp. This is from a deleted post credit scene where this box was meant to hold the head of Norman Osborn, the Chris Cooper version of Norman Osborn, with okay. the implication that he was also going to come back as another goblin. Uh, and we have a photo. Uh, of that here um, and what I put in between is is the actual prop picture of uh, Norman Osborn's head inside of the uh, inside of the container I mean, but, we talked about Lord Zed earlier right this is yes. this is like Zordon the guy. <laughs> this yeah. looks very Zordon yeah 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 <laughs> so yeah this who knows where that was going to go either like that's it's kind of dumb to me that you're going to kill Norman Osborn off but be like oh no we're going to resurrect him anyway and also, how do you resurrect a guy with a severed head? But whatever the case is, they had uh, some plans to bring him back. I think <laughs> right. that was that's a mess. That's a, just yeah. a mess. Yeah. Keep him dead. Make the other guy look at, like more like Hobgoblin, mm. for the love of God. And uh, forget all this other nonsense. <laughs> right. <laughs> so uh, that's sort of the, the breakdown of The Amazing Spider-Man 2. Again, I know there are other deleted scenes. There's other things like... Uh, Harry's Goblin getting to kill the one board member who was against him. Uh, there's another moment where Felicia Hardy, you know, the one time we finally get to Felicia Hardy, there's no hint at all that she's going to be Black Cat, but she's Harry's assistant and she sees him as the Goblin. Like, there's little moments like that, but the major stuff is what I brought up in terms of MJ, uh, his dad being alive, and this whole thing with the separate head. Uh, and we'll go probably go more into those aspects in the Patreon as well as, you know, the next time that we talk about this. It's going to be covering all the plans they had for this, you know, this amazing Spider-Man universe that didn't go through. So it's all been prep work for that, just like all the Raimi stuff was prep work for the Unmade Spider-Man Four stuff. So uh, this is all this is all prep. But uh, yeah, that's it for the uh, the Amazing Spider-Man Two. What stuff did you? Uh, what stuff jumped out at you? Uh, I think it's probably this stuff, really, the deleted scenes. I would say probably more so than the, the designs. Uh, jumped out the most, I guess, yeah. Uh, I mean, most of the designs just weren't my cup of tea, <laughs> most <laughs> right. of them. Maybe that mm-hmm. first flying green goblin, you know, the one without the control yeah. panel. Uh, oh, yeah. Other than that, I don't know, dude. Yeah, they weren't. It's just I don't know. They just weren't weren't my thing. Yeah. You? The the deleted scenes way more so than the concept art. It's kind of cool to see the more comic accurate version of Rhino. Yeah. Um, most of the Goblin stuff wasn't really like the last time we went over the Goblin stuff for the first Spider Man was that concept art was way more interesting. That was that concept art was um, a lot better. Here I think they just went overboard with like we got to make it realistic, but also he's a monster dude who injected himself with an experimental serum. You know, like it's right, it, right, it's right. that weird. Like we got to draw the line, but also we're going all comic booky, but not at the same time. It's that yeah, back. I don't and know forth what that, to do. Yeah, it's the yeah, it's the it's the back and forth that's sort of emblematic of this. You know, because it's like the tail end of that era, and maybe we're still we've gone back to a variation of that now um, in some ways, but um, it's it's one where like. I'm sure there was a lot of disappointment that we got stuff like this when you were looking at MCU stuff where, you know, this is 2014. This is the same year where Guardians of the Galaxy comes out where they're, right. like, they're just flat out like, yeah, there's a talking raccoon and a talking tree. Deal with it. <laughs> yeah, I know. Exactly. Because they're fun characters and we'll buy everything if they're fun. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Basically, yeah. you know, you know, the, the central tenets of, of good writing, and good drama and good character work. Yeah. But they wanted Zordon in this, so all right. Yeah. So Zordon was going to be Green Goblin. And on that note, (laughs) that is superhero stuff you should know. 
coming soon from Newverse Creative. Riddle me this, Fred! What is everything to someone and nothing to everyone else? Your mind! In an uncertain world, in a chaotic time, Justice wears a mask. Batman does not kill? What if those slain during his fight with Jack Napier, the Joker? Love is a game. Let's just say I could write a heck of a paper on why a grown man dresses up like a flying rodent. Bats aren't rodents, Dr. Meridian. Tower is a machine. Question marks, Mr. Wayne. My work raises so many question marks. Here's one for you. Why hasn't anybody put you in your place? And revenge is a trap. The bat must die. <laughs> Courage now. I saved your bad buff back there. I think a little appreciation is in order. Truth always. Who's the boy wonder, Batman? Experience the original Batman forever. Finally performed in the style of the Burton verse. I see without seeing. To me, darkness is as clear as daylight. What am I? Batman 3, based on the screenplay by Lee and Janet Scott Batchelor with Akiva Goldsman. Adapted by Ben Wan from superhero stuff you should know. My parents were murdered in front of me. I was just a kid. I can't remember exactly what happened. But now there's a new element. A red leather book. Coming soon. Big thanks to Dan for gathering the visuals for the YouTube experience that we have here. Let's jump into the um, the uh, next comment. So, uh, Weezing336 commented on our episode about who was the most heroic Batman. Um, I really like this comment. Uh, Weezing said, quote, there are different interpretations of Batman. Some make him what should be referred to as an anti-hero, kind of like what we addressed in that episode. But to mm -hmm. me, he loses his humanity and is no better than the villains if he is a murderer or if he's letting people die. I agree in some way, even as a fan of the uh, movie versions where he does end up killing. Yeah. Not because I'm not a fan because he ends up killing. It's just I'm a fan of other aspects of the, those uh, takes on the character. Um, so Weezing says, I mean, even letting his villains die is damning. You don't have to write Batman into a situation where he's quote unquote defending himself. To me, Batman fights crime because he appreciates life. He wants a utopia. Yes, Superman is hopeful and cheerful, but Batman wants to create a reality in which he can feel the same. And that's Batman to him. So thank you, Weezing, for that. Yeah, I think I pretty insight. much agree with that. I mean, I think Batman and Superman sort of both are trying to more or less mm -hmm. create a utopia. I think yeah. Superman's just trying to deal more or less like how do I not interfere too much uh, right. at the, more than bat more than Batman because of the power difference. But and Batman um, might be thinking, "Am I doing enough?" Yeah, exactly. So mm -hmm. yeah, so yeah, I agree. I agree with this pretty much. Yeah. Thank you, Weezing. Uh, this next Thank comment you. comes from he wants us to call him Johnny, so I'll call him Johnny. Hey guys, okay. it's me, the Brazilian Portuguese fan who asked about the 2008 Shazam draft. Call me Johnny. Also, the Ian Joyner concept of the lizard with the wingspan that we saw from last week reminds me of the alien dragons from Avatar and the normal yeah. ones from How to Train Your Dragon. But also, there is a species of lizard that had gliding membranes who can jump in the air. I think it would be cool if the lizard had this ability. Interesting. Mm. Uh, would be a change, for sure, uh, while still rooted in lizards. Um I don't know. I think we're both traditionalists. We like we just want him in the lab coat. We don't necessarily want him to have wings. 
just give him the fucking ragged ass lab coat. <laughs> like that's yeah. I really, I really think that's a big part of it. I think so too. Uh, also, I think the whole blue striped concept of Spidey by Ed Natividad. I think he's referring to uh, the one that almost looked like he was mostly red and naked from last week. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Yeah. Thought that was the worst of the bunch. What do you guys think? Yeah. I mean, we we thought so too, and I think we gave it the goose egg when we were going over the unmade spiders Spider Man suits with Zach. Yeah. A few years ago. So God, I forgot about that. But yeah, th- this a lot. A lot of these like this, they're paid to play around with it. But mm-hmm. a lot of the playing around is, you know, they're not great <laughs> a yeah. lot of the time. No. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Thanks, Johnny. Yes, thank you. All right. Last one comes from Mike Martins, uh, who brought up where that concept art that we went over last week, where it looked like he was visiting like a leather shop, or Uncle Ben's shop, or something like that. Mike brings up, quote, is the shop that Peter's father, it's the shop where Peter's father bought the suitcase from. So in the movie, there's like this suitcase that his father had left him that had all this stuff in it. Um, so I guess this comes from a scene where Peter visits it. I don't know why you would visit the shop where he bought a suitcase as opposed to Oscorp where he worked, <laughs> which is what he does in the movie. But, uh, you know, Mike didn't write it. He's just telling us what it is. So... Thank Thanks, you Mike. for the clarification. Yeah, I had no idea. Yeah. All right. On to the shout outs. Man, oh man, here we are. All right. So let's thank uh, Carlos R., Jose D., Robert H., and the amazing Spider Man. <laughs> we got Perfect heroes am- amongst this bunch. <laughs> and everybody <laughs> else here, of course, as well, other supporters. Also, as usual, everybody, thank you so much. And we've told you about our uh, friends there. And we'd like you to do us a favor. We want you to tell all your friends about us. 